Welcome guys, Mel here from Mel's Motors. Um, got a BMW K1200S, it's a 2005, uh, it's a K40 version. Uh, customers dropped it off, speedometer not working. Uh, I've already got my diagnostic tool on there. Um, I've kind of already started the job. Uh, I could see that it was starting to develop, it might be an interesting video. If you like these sorts of things, stick around. So scanner's on, I've taken the tank off and a few bits and pieces to gain access to the computers. Um, I've got my diagnostic scanner on there, I've just done a quick global scan. Global scan doesn't mean we're scanning the entire planet. Our vehicle here is our world, so we've done a scan. You can see all the red ones here, there's quite a few uh, systems with fault codes in there. Uh, we'll just click on the engine one for the minute and see what we see. Okay, so we've got a serial data line, CAN bus line error, lost communication with ABS control unit. So we have a communication error on this particular ECU. Uh, CAN bus, what is CAN bus? So CAN is controlled area network. Um, what does that mean? Is all the computers on the car or on the bike that you saw uh, in that list, they're all on a network. And the reason they're on the network is so they can share data. Um, what does that mean? For example, the ABS unit, it reads wheel speed, uh, brake pressure. Now, the speedometer may want to know what the road speed is. So instead of sending wires to every, uh, every speed sensor from every computer, you would use one net network line and share the information across a variety of computers. Now, for example, um, the ABS will share with the instrument cluster, the engine ECU may want to know What's, uh, what speed the vehicle's doing, whether the brake's being applied, whether the throttle shut off, um, and the ABS unit may want to share some information with the, the engine control unit. So it saves on wiring, and if the rest of the system wants to use that information, they have the ability to use the controlled area network bus line uh, to retrieve that information. Now we have different types of CAN. Uh, this is in the video to explain all that, but we have low speed, high speed CAN. Um, and that's what we're going to be checking on this system. So I'm just going to go back and just have a look at some of the other lines and see if we have similar fault codes. So that was the engine control module uh, not being able to talk to the ABS unit. So let's go, well as we can see the ABS unit here doesn't seem to have an issue. So let's try the chassis electronics. Right, so the, the chassis ECU also has uh, a, a network issue with the ABS, uh, no communication. Okay, let's try the suspension. Uh, we have the same communication code. I'm just going to go into the ABS unit and see if we can see anything in there. Okay, that wouldn't let me in. Let's try this one. Okay, um, I've just tried to get into the ABS system outside of all the other systems. Um, as you saw on there, we had uh, three uh, green dots with uh, ABS next to them. I'll show you. Um, here, so we had the three greens. I tried to go in all three of those. As you saw, neither of them would go in. So I came out of Global Scan, went into it as individual module, still no access. 
So what we've got here is false positives. So none of these seem to work. Now, some of you eagle-eyed out there may have noticed when I was going through these ECUs, uh, this is the ABS module, but there's something missing here. Uh, the, the modulator, which uh, runs the brake system, has been deleted off this, but the ECU has been kept. But you need to keep the ECU in because it does a lot of work in between all these other computers. So the bit that's missing, I'll show you here. Let's quickly go into parts link. So this is the, the, the pressure modulator, which is uh, this control unit on the side. We've still got the ECU on the left, but this has been deleted. Uh, it's quite a common thing that most people do, deleting these modulators. They're notorious for packing up, they're super unreliable. Um, the only difference is, is where this applies a bit of a servo effect. You just have to go back and just have a firmer grip on your brakes. They seem to work just fine. Uh, most people do them, um, hence why we have this space here. But you need to keep the ECU to keep the system working. Right, next step is to run some tests. So we're gonna uh, look at a wiring diagram and um, see what we've got to test throughout the line and see what the issue is and where we can find this problem. Okay, so just come into my wiring diagram. Um, what we going to do now is look for the lives in the earth. Uh, this is our battery up here, so if we just hover over it, so we've got the starting battery. We have live going to number 10 down here, and if you follow the earth, we've got earth number 16. Uh, also from the ignition switch, we have live coming into pin 2. Uh, the picture of our plug, we can see 10 and 16, so the live in the earth are big pins, and then 1 to 9 at the bottom, so we're looking for number 2 as an ignition switch. So, uh, I've already got my back probed pins in where I need them. Um, you can see we've got the really big um, cable here for the earth, and one at the back here, the red one live and also this green one, um, which is the ignition live. Now, when we do the testing, we use a test light, not an LED tester. Um, an LED tester will show us there's something there, but it won't uh, tell us if there's 12 volts there. When you use a test light, it draws current and lights up, so we know that we've got a good uh, live on Earth. Because if one of these, uh, wires was to break and leave one strand one strand will give us voltage but it won't give us current or well, not enough to light this bulb up so this one is ignition live so i'm just going to leave that in there whilst i turn the ignition on and you can see we have ignition live as well so we know we have our grounds uh our live and our ignition live so the next we're going to do now is check our communication cables which is our CAN bus which i spoke about earlier and the CAN bus cables on this are white with brown tracer and white with black tracer. Okay, before we do any of our communication checks, uh, we can see here, pictured here, we've got two, two green wires. They're not actually green on the bike. They are white with brown tracer and white with black tracer. Although they look green on here, they're not. So, I just highlighted that, we can see it flashing. So, we know that this ABS unit is networked with um, the, sh uh, the chassis management control unit, um, the engine management control unit, uh, instrument panel, and the anti-theft control unit. Now, all CAN networks will have a termination resistor on either end of the circuit. Now, it doesn't mean one's going to be here and one's going to be here. So any one of these units could have a termination resistor built within it. So normally the resistor is 120 ohms. One of the units will have it. So we've got one, two, three, four, five units. And the great thing is it tells me where the the, the units are so the anti theft control unit is under the saddle. Under the saddle, 
we've got our instrument panel which is here uh, the engine manager control unit which is again under the saddle so that's our ECU here um, our ABS control unit is under the fuel tank so the fuel tanks are already off so this is this we just tested And our chassis management control unit is behind the front left fairing, and that is here. So what I'm going to do now is uh, get my multimeter. Uh, we're going to do a line resistance check. Um, like I said, there's termination resistors on either end of this circuit. Um, so we're going to use our multimeter to get some resistance checks on it and see what's happening. Okay, so I've got my multimeter set up on ohms, which is resistance. Um, I'm using the engine ECU because it's the easiest one for me to get to. And we're going to see what kind of resistance we have on this line. Okay, so we have about 58 ohms. Now I said that there was 120 ohm resistor on either end of this circuit. Now the reason that resistors there is to stop echoing within the line. But why have we got to around 60? Well, if you add two resistors, two resistors doesn't actually double the resistance, it actually halves it, because you're giving two paths to the line to reduce the resistance. So two 120s actually get divided by two to make a 60. Um, so what we're gonna do is disconnect this engine control unit and see if the resistance changes if it does change then we know that the resistance is built into this unit um, when I said the resistance were at the end of a line they're normally built inside a control module so it could be this one it could be the the alarm system the ABS unit the uh, instrument cluster so we won't know until we disconnect these lines so whilst these are connected let's see if I can just pull this off Right, as we can see, the line is still at uh, 60 ohms. Um, whilst that connected, I will disconnect the ABS unit. We're still at 60 ohms. We'll try the alarm. Okay, so I've disconnected the Lee alarm. It's gone up to 116 ohms, which is very close to 120. So we know that one of the resistors is being built into this alarm unit. I'm going to plug these back in. Uh, I'm going to leave these disconnected. So I've got two more control units to, to disconnect, which is one in the inner arch here, which is a bit more difficult to get to than the dashboard. I've already got the dashboard disconnected, so I'll unplug that and see if our resistance changed. Okay, that's disconnected. And now we can see that our um, resistance has gone up to 113.4, which is reasonably close to 120. So ironically on this system, at either end of the motorcycle, just the dash and the alarm system um, actually um, have the 120 ohm resistor in it. Okay, so I've got this ECU out. Uh, there's nuts and bolts holding it together. Um, if you have a look at these bolts, you can see how long they are. They're the original bolts that holds the modulator on the back of this. Um, this back cover is, looks like it's been machined and made specifically just to cover this whilst it's um, been modified to run without the, the modulator. Um, otherwise, all these wires are exposed. Um, not sure where this came from or who made it. Um, and have a look inside here to see if there's uh, any issues that we can clearly see in here and I can already see that, that there's uh, looks like a burn mark or, or smoke or something um, 
and I can already smell um, a burning circuit board so I know there's an issue in here um, I can see that something's been frying over in the corner uh, what I'll do is I'll swap cameras now and try and get a macro shot of these so we can see there's been an issue right in that corner see right there and these little um, I don't know what they are to be fair They're like little MOSFET packs okay so this has become a bit of a challenge um, done Google search eBay, global eBay, trying to find uh, either a replacement ECU or the complete modulator. Um, I've run a load of suppliers, uh, it's taken days, but some people have got back to me and said, right, we think we found you at an ECU. So I've got one here. There's the old one. Now, to find this on its own is a real challenge because most of the time I have the modulator on the back. But it's this that normally packs up the bit on the back. So uh, saving these and reselling these is, uh, uh, if you do a delete, they come in quite handy. Um, now the supplier said, look, try it, give it a go. If it works, by all means, carry on. Uh, if it doesn't, they're happy to give me a full refund on it. So it's very good of them. Um, looking at the difference, um, I'll get a close view, but um, it looks like that this original one may have got some moisture in there because looking at this one this is super shiny inside compared to this one so this is the old one all dull and burnt and this one is super shiny I mean you can even get the glare off um, off our skylights but this one no uh, so I'm gonna put this cover back on it um, tighten the bolts up to try and keep some of that moisture out uh, I don't really want to silicon it uh, I'll plug it in and see if we get any communication out of it okay so we're doing another global scan here um, to see where we get to right so ABS unit got three reds on there we didn't know that before we had three greens turned out to be false positives so now I'm just going to go into it and see what it says Okay, we're in. So we have a few issues naturally. Uh, so the ECU info is. So uh, this is a K1200S. This is off an R1200GS. Same ECU, just uh, programmed differently. I'll just see if I can do an update on the information on it well see if we can clear the codes at least well we've cleared it it hasn't come back let's see if we can clear the codes from all the other systems okay all the faults are cleared so I'm just going to go back and do another global scan from scratch okay all green apart from TPMS but I did go in there just now there were no fault codes in there yeah there's no fault codes I don't know why it's coming up red okay well I'm not worried about the other two but we've got communication back all systems are green um, I am going to try and see if I can just change the data on these um, ABS units. The one we've got is an FTE, so it's this one, but there's a, uh, there's a Continental one. Although it went into all three of them, they probably use very similar software, but FTE is the one that we've got here. Um, I'm not going to bore you. Let me try and to, um, see if I can change that data. I'll go through the system and see if there's any anywhere in there where it'll help me do it. But... Uh, it's not going to affect this video, but it, if I do manage to change it, I'll, I'll come back and let you guys know. Okay, after cycling the ignition, uh, we have a few failures that have come back up naturally because half the ABS unit's missing. Um, obviously, you can't see the brake fluid level because that's inside the, the modulator. Uh, 
it's complaining about ECU failure, but if you go to the parameters here, um, we've got battery voltage and it's seeing a load of other stuff. Now, um, going to the fault codes, um, I span the wheels. I'm getting speed from the rear wheel sensor, but not from the front. And if you go into the parameters, we can see that the rear running voltage is 1.58 volts and the front one zero. So we may have a faulty front wheel sensor. Um, once I get the bike back together, we'll go for a quick road test, see if the speedo works. If the speedo works, it's ready to go. If it doesn't, we're gonna need a front wheel sensor. Okay, tank back off, uh, ECU is just there. Uh, we'll do a continuity test from there to the plug, which is just behind this fairing. We'll do that from underneath. Make sure we've got continuity on both lines back to the ECU. If we have, uh, it's more than likely it's gonna be the sensor, but we should be able to do a, a quick speed sensor check as well. Uh, use the multimeter and see if we get any AC voltage out of there. Sorry, it's a live workshop. Guys are working over there and making a lot of noise. Ah, the joys of working in a live workshop. Um, okay, let's get that um, tank back off and check the wiring. Okay, so the plugs in that corner, just about to see. Um, they're in the middle of the screen. Um, two yellow wires, one red, red tracer, one green tracer. Go over to the ECU. Uh, there, so we've got uh, two yellows, red tracer, green, uh, brown tracer. So, um, identified two wires, so I'll un unplug that. We'll do continuity from here to the other end and make sure the wires are not broken. Okay, we're testing the yellow with the red tracer. Uh, I've got my back probe pick in there and we have continuity. So now I'm gonna swap it over to the other one. I'm gonna swap the wire over at the bottom. Okay, let's test the other wire. And we have continuity, so no broken wires here. So it's looking more and more like the sensor. Um, I'll see if I can get any AC voltage out of the sensor. Okay, so I've come here to the back sensor. Um, just before we do try and do an AC test, uh, AC voltage test, uh, you can only do an AC voltage test with a hall sensor. Um, the reason I've come to the back one, because we know this is a known good sensor, as we saw on the live data with the scanner, that this was working. So I've got the plug here, is the one that goes to the ECU, and the one here goes to the sensor. 
So, first thing I'm going to do is check the wiring from the ECU and see if we've got voltage here. If we have voltage, anything between 5 and 12 volts, then we know that this is a digital sensor and not a hall sensor. Which means we won't be able to do an AC test through the sensor. So first thing is, I'm gonna, I've got my multimeter here set to auto. So I'm going to plug it into the ECU side of the loom and turn the ignition on and see if we've got any voltage. Um, well, we've got resistance. That's going back into the ECU. I'll turn the ignition on. And we've got battery voltage. So now I know that this is a digital sensor. So if I unplug that and plug into this. So now that is plugged in. As you can see, we've got 2.9 milliohms. So we do have very high resistance within this line. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug this into the, uh, the front sensor and see if we have very similar readings to this. Okay, so we're set up in the front sensor. Let's see what reading we've got. So we do have resistance on here. The front, the rear one was 2.9 milliohms. This is 34 uh, milliohms. Um, that's a hell of a lot more than 2.9. Uh, so it's probably this high resistance which is causing a problem at the front sensor. So it still has a loop in there, but it's uh, it's so high in resistance that it, it isn't uh, giving us a reading through the ECU. Okay, a lot of boxes here, uh, lots of sensors. Um, I've got a GS310 over there, uh, it's, it's one I own. Um, I took the sensor off that, see if that would work, um, it didn't, uh, this is the genuine one, the, the tips were different sizes anyway, but it, it didn't like it. Um, I ordered a reasonably affordable car one, off a of BMW, and I thought well we'll try that, all I want to do is get the, the speedo working, because it's got no ABS on there, so we literally needed a sensor just to get the speedo to work. Uh, that didn't work, um, I did a crossover with a genuine part number to a Bosch number, that turned up, again that was wrong, P plugged it in um, and it's, I still couldn't get a reading out of it. In the end I had to get a genuine one, uh, it's fitted to the bike now, uh, but that was from dealer, that was very expensive, um, I tried to save him that but ended up spending all that. Uh, not the customer's fault. These are still genuine, uh, uh, still good sensors. They'll go on the shelf. We'll probably use them at some point in the future. Um, I've got my scanner set up. I've got orange light flashing because I've still got faults in there because the modulator's missing. Uh, but now if I spin the wheels, it might be a bit difficult to see because the camera's quite far away, but back wheel, uh, two mile an hour there. And if I spin the front one, yeah, I got two or three mile an hour there as well. So both of them are working. So hopefully, um, as I ride it or push it, I should get some speed out of it. Um, it was peeing down the rain. Uh, it's unlikely I'm gonna go for a road test, but I'll just push it around the workshop. If the speedo moves off zero, then we know job's done. Well, I got a slight break in the weather, uh, managed to get it up and down our uh, industrial estate, uh, got about 30 odd miles an hour out of it. So now we know the speedo works in, in the real world, which is great. Um, I did push it around in here, I, I, got, I got it off zero, but I couldn't really see what we was doing, so it had to go for a road test. A um, bit of a challenge, uh, as you saw, uh, we had uh, a couple of issues. Uh, Obviously the modulator was missing, so we had fault codes anyway, but um, the ECU itself was faulty, hence uh, we couldn't get any readings out of it. 
Sorry about the background noise. Uh, as always, this is a live workshop. This is my day job, so all the videos are done throughout the day. Um, tried to save the customers some money with those ABS sensors. Uh, it didn't work, so it cost me some money, but the sensors are still good, so we can keep those on the shelf. Um, as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video of this BMW K1200S uh, and you like similar videos, um, we did actually do a, a video on uh, uh, R1150RT. Uh, I'll put a link below where we had uh, brake issues with that one, upgraded the brake hoses to uh, braided hoses, and I gave through the, the sequence of bleeding the brakes. Not a pleasant job, not looking forward to doing another one in the near future. Um, as always guys, please hit the like button and subscribe button, bell notifications so you're notified as I upload a video. Okay guys.